Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Cherry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And of course, I have with me the amazing, the They're one and only. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you are the one and only, but I am Heather Goldstein. <laughs> Yay! Um, if you guys saw the show last week, you will recognize her. She is, I'm dubbing you the queen of canvas. It's your official title. Sure. We need business cards. Um, so Heather knows all the things canvas related just because you are you, in this uh, industry for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, you are part of the family that owns this company. Heirs of art supplies. Yes, yeah. yes. So <laughs> she has been born and raised in all the art supplies. And uh, canvas is one of those things that just confuses me. Even though I know a little bit about the stretcher bars and the canvas and all that things. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to start off the year and go over all things canvas. Yes. And not only give me knowledge, but also you. So uh, today's class code for all of you uh, looking to check out all the supplies that we are going to be showing you today. The code is JL224. So if you go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in that code into the top search bar, JL224, uh, the teacher's cart sh should come up and show you all the things that we're going to be covering today. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, well, actually, before I do, we do jump in. Yeah. Quick little reminder, it's officially that time of the year. 10th annual self-portrait contest is happening. Uh, for those of you who... Uh, don't know. Uh, I know my moderators are going to be putting the links into the chats below for you guys to check out, but it's our 10th annual self-portrait contest. So oh my God. get starting <laughs> on those paintings, guys. But let's, we got, you know, a lot of stretcher bars to cover. So let's, let's jump in yeah, and I will hand now. it off. Let's talk stretcher bars. Yes. Uh, okay. So I brought a, pro a plethora of uh, stretcher bar options for us to go over. And I figure uh, we can start from light duty to heavy duty. So the first options I have for light duty, I'm gonna have Emmy. I will be Vanna White today. Also. You're also going to help me assemble, so. Oh, and just for those of you who are, just a little warning, uh, we are going to be using tools today. Yeah. So if you have your headphones on or if you have that volume cranked, it might get a little loud, just a little fair warning. Yeah. Um, but there's no way that we, no way that we can put some of these together without using tools like that. So, just to let you know. All right. Anyway, back to these. So Lovely. we have the uh, ProLite stretcher bars and the Creative Mark stretcher strips. Uh, the Creative Mark stretcher strips come in two packs. Uh, the ProLite are sold in boxes of six, I think. Um, but both of them are light duty. They're uh, three quarter inch depth. So this is that side of your canvas. Um, most important thing about stretcher bars. Can you, for the brand new people, explain what a stretcher bar actually is? Valid question. Yes. <laughs> in case people are not familiar with this at all. Yes. Do we have a canvas? Can we call on a canvas, please? <laughs> That'll be the easiest way to explain yes. what these are. We are visual people, so we will give you visual cues. Um, yay, Katie for the win. Huzzah! There so, is. when you have a stretched canvas. Stretched canvas. Stretched canvas is stretched on stretcher bars. Which is wood. So Usually wood. We have pre-stretched canvases that we sell at Jerry's. But we also have lots and lots of canvas and linen rolls that we went over last week. And so if you wanted to stretch your own, you would buy stretcher bars to create your own custom beautiful canvas. Yes. So this is essentially just the frame, the structure of what you wrap your canvas around. Right. To then paint on. Right. So for the light duty, um, actually for any stretcher bar, the most important thing is that it has a lip. And this is... Uh, the difference between, you know, just buying some two by fours or something and putting together yeah, a frame. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a lot of my friends, especially going through college when mm -hmm. we are just broke, mm -hmm. um, we go to Home Depot, we get a bunch of wood, we put a frame together and that's how we made our canvas. Mm -hmm. But this has a little bump on that side. Right. And I mean, every single one. So the reason why you have that lip is so when you stretch your canvas, Um, hopefully we can see this, 
But as you put pressure on it and paint, if there was no lip, you would have a line, a second line going around the entire canvas from the stretcher bar. Makes sense. So if I push on it with my fingers from behind, which is, you know, think of that as like the, the wood that would be flush with it. Yeah, that would be visible. Yeah. Which is not good. So this actually, the lips just hold the canvas up just a little bit mm -hmm. to where it gives you that gap between the right. rest of the stretcher bar. So you don't have any ghosting and showing, you know, the stretcher bar underneath. Makes sense. So... Emmy here has the Creative Mark stretcher strips, which she'll put together. Um, and then I have the Pro Light. So the difference between these, they're both pine stretcher bars. Um, but the difference between these is that those have a lip on one side, which is traditional, and the Pro Light bars actually have the lip on both sides of the oh. canvas. Um, didn't know that. Options? Why? Yeah. Is that is it just uh, so you can I think use the other side? Well, I think it's if you need to restretch it, so that way, like you pull, um, when you pull like all the staples out and stuff like that, you have a fresh side to restaple on. That's kind of cool. So, are we putting? You know? Are we putting all four of them together? Um, and sure. just so people know, the way that I'm putting these together, because these are cut. As you can see, the ends, um, here, maybe we can do a different view. Yeah, <laughs> let's go this way. So you can see, let me pull this up a little bit. The cuts that are right here, that's a good view. Yeah, so I can really understand when we slide them together, they slide together. If I can do this with my hands way up here, so you can see that they kind of just slide together like that. Yeah, but make sure that the lip is all on the same side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see that? That's the lip. That's see how there's no lip right there? <laughs> I'm going to flip this. This is why I have Heather in my life, guys. There we go. And make the corners nice and mm -hmm. flush to where they are straight. And then if I flip it, you can see that lip. Cool. And then just because we have this angle, you can see a little bit better here. Uh, Oh, Aha. yeah, get close that that lip <laughs> is on both sides of this bar. That is so cool. I quite like that. Okay, well, all of these bars are going to have a tongue and groove like she was just showing you. That's the name of it, tongue and groove. Mm -hmm. I was trying to remember what the name of that was. Um, I did the exact same thing with this one that I've been doing with all of the stretcher bars. Oh, yeah, if you have, so I have all four of mine because they come in two packs. We got the same size all around, and I haven't quite pushed this in yet. But if you have, like for instance, Heather has an eight by 11, which is the um, the size of the bars are written right here. Um, don't put your two sizes that match together because you need them to be on the opposite. <laughs> we've been, we've been oh. literally doing that all day. Yep. So. Doing good here. That's all okay. Right. So, you know what we didn't grab? What? Tape measure. Oh, yeah. Need I'm that. sorry. Katie? <laughs> that can, can we get a tape measure? <laughs> I can save it for the big one. I guess that's true. Because that's when we'll be putting those on. Um, so for the light duty stretcher bars, both of these, um, I think they both come up to uh, 50 inch. And the reason why is because although they are, you know, kiln dried, solid pine, and stable, they're still thinner, smaller strips, so you don't want to go too large with your painting. These also don't have crossbars that are available with them. So again, you don't want to go too large. Could you use other crossbars? I mean, we're all artists here. You can I mean, technically, make right? shift whatever. Although I would imagine <laughs> if we were to use a crossbar, I don't know, because it still fl sits pretty flush. Like, this is uh, one of the crossbars that we'll show you later on. And I was thinking that it might be a little too deep for that. Yeah. But it actually works just, just A-OK. -okay. Ha-ha. So the Thank answer you, there is maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I would imagine it could. As long as it doesn't sit up past that lip, right? Right. So you would want it to be flush with this part of the bar. Gotcha. OK, well. 
Moving on to the Gallery Pro. So these are our light duty. Okay. Uh, now we have medium duty. This is the Gallery Pro. It is one and a half inch deep, I believe. Um, but it's so it's one this right here. That's yeah. The depth. Yeah. That side amount. And these go up to 72 inches. What I really like about this bar um, is the profile on this one. So the, uh, and that's when you say the profile, you mean like when they're looking at it straight yeah. onto the edge, that shape. Right. Um, so the profile on this, that lip is very deep, um, which I like because that gives you a lot of extra room for when you're pushing on your canvas. I thought you were going to say punching the canvas. When you're punching your canvas. <laughs> All right, and this has the same tongue and groove, um, I guess, joinery. Is that the technical term? Joinery? Yeah. All right, fair warning. Here's that uh, Here's rubber mallet. I know it's kind of a mess right now the way it is. Yes. So would you say you would want to tack each corner in fully before you put them all together? Or do you want to have like a little bit of, you know, when like you put, I guess, stuff together, usually when you're like screwing stuff together and you, you don't tighten all your screws, is that kind of the same concept? Yeah. I mean, as you're putting these together, until you have all four sides on, it's going to move around. Yeah. So I don't get too crazy about squaring it off before you have all of your sides on it. Is that, is that in? Yeah. Teamwork! <laughs> also, for this last bar, as you can see, I'm not hammering one side all the way. I'm going back and forth so that it goes in evenly. Good to know or as evenly as possible. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is just go around and make sure that it seems uh, like all of the corners are matched up. Mm -hmm. And then we will actually check if it is square with a measuring tape. Measure. tape. Now this, I, I've seen it done so many times and it just, for whatever reason, confuses me. Explain what you were doing, please. So your dimensions, if it's square, should be exactly the same. So you're measuring from corner to corner, opposite right. corner to corner. And this is not square. Okay. Because you got two different measurements, right? right. Okay. So you want to so, make sure that when it's completed that your measurement from one end to the other is the same as the opposite two corners. Now, on the since, diagonal. since this is not square, as we just found out because you measured it, what would your next steps be to square it up? Um, having a right angle is very helpful. Uh, we are actually working on, since this is small, we are working on a cutting mat, so I have lots of right angles to choose from yep. to figure that out. And this is, just so you guys can hopefully maybe see, um, I'm going to actually pull this down just a little so you can see it. This is the accurate cutting, the self-healing cutting mat, in case you guys are wondering. I did not actually put that into the teacher's cart, FYI. I can add it later. I just, we last minute wanted to pat the table a little bit <laughs> and have something straight to work on. So I can do that later. But So, so um, how do you know which corner to whack? Well, right now, so I'm going to find, I'm going to use this bottom uh, bar as a constraint. Okay. Right? So I can see oh. on this side that it's going, that it's not at a right angle, so it's going over to the left a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Hammer that corner in until, until she's straight, until it's straight. So 
So little taps will do it. You don't need big, yeah. crazy I don't, muscles to... I don't want to spend too much time on this one because we have more yeah. to go through. But... but that would be the process you would do. Right. Okay. Good to know. Um, the next thing would be a cross brace. Mm -hmm. So the Gallery Pro cross braces, um, there are three different types that you can get. This is a no-notch cross brace. So and if, that means that what means, exactly? That means there is no notch. This is just a plain old cross brace. So if you were going to just use one cross brace in your canvas, you don't need a notch on it. However, if you were going to create a T like this, this is not the right one, by the way, but if you were to go this direction, then you would need two crossbars, one with a top notch and one with a bottom notch. So that's so then they would fit together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle piece, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yep. Now, why would you do a crisscross rather than a single cross brace? It depends on how large your canvas is. So okay. the rule of thumb that I always learned was a crossbar about every 30 inches. So you, you would not need a cross brace on a 12 by 16. This is just for an example. So um, like, but like a 20 by 30, you might have 20 by 30, you could do, brace. you could do one or two. Okay. Uh, we're going to have two on our 20 by 30. I was going to say, I feel but like you this also, one, yeah, this one is a 16 by 20. So this is a, the pre-made canvas that we have. Mm -hmm. And this is consistent with that, like kind of rule of every 30 inches, it'll have a cross brace. That's consistent even with the pre-made. Oh yeah. Yeah. As well. So that's why this being a 16 by 20 doesn't have a cross brace because it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, specifically, if you if this were like a 30 by 20, right? Mm -hmm. And it was this kind of a shape, which direction would you cross brace? You want you want to brace the larger edge, which means that if you have a 20 by 30, you want a 20 inch cross brace so that you're bracing the larger 30 inch side. So it would go like this yes. way, Just right? Just as a note, yes. um, if anyone is looking into custom canvas with Jerry's, we cross brace at 36 inches. That's good to know. So you can math down that if you're ordering larger than a 36 inch canvas. Also makes sense, because you know, feet and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can, even if you do have a pre-made canvas and mm -hmm. you wanted to add cross braces just to give it a little extra oomph, you can get cross braces and still do that mm -hmm. if you really wanted to. Yes, yeah. depending on the, the cross size. bars of the I head. guess that makes sense, yeah. yeah. So You'd have to have the right size. The answer is yes, like, kind of. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to use these cross braces on that. And we'll explain why you can't use the profile cross braces, but mm -hmm. okay. So. For the Gallery Pro and the Pro Bars that we're about to go over after this, these, you'll notice that the um, the back of the stretcher bar has like a platformed area. You can see, haha, -ha, right there. This and little ridge. That is so your cross brace can go in the back and it doesn't change. Um, so flush. Exactly. So, so it won't stick it out won't stick out from the wall, wall or anything like that. Oh, look at you guys thinking of things ahead of time. So we have, there are um, wood screws available online that you can buy to drill these in. I actually have some copper tacks here. Which aesthetically, very pleasing. Yes. We love us a copper tack. <laughs> and I will hold this side. You don't really need a... I will say, if you're using copper tacks, it's a lot easier if you have a metal tack hammer. Um, Valid. But not necessary. Yeah. We did not think of that. Or not metal, magnetic. Oh, <laughs> all, magnetic. all metal. Uh, but yeah, we didn't think of that beforehand. But yeah. yes, a, a normal hammer, as you can see, works just fine. One thing I will say, though, um, when you are putting your stretcher bars together and your cross braces, I do not recommend using wood glue. Some people like to put wood glue in the corners and on their cross braces just to make it super, super strong. But the problem with that is that your stretched, your canvas over time can loosen um, and you won't be able to key it out, which is one of the nice things that you can do with stretcher bars. Now, for those of 
the viewers that don't know what keying out is, mm -hmm. can you explain that? Do we have keys? Don't think we have, do we have keys? I honestly did not even think about this. I'm sorry, Katie. Katie is just <laughs> doing amazing things today. Everyone give Katie a round of applause in the comments. Give her some love because she's doing great things. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we try to be prepared for these things, perfect. but we totally forget some of them. This is perfect. Thank you. All right. It's a little bit bigger, but All right. here we go. So I'm going to um, kind of push it up so you guys can see the bottom here. On your stretched canvas, um, the pre-stretched stuff, as well as your bars that you put together yourself, will have a little space between uh, the corners. Do we have that on that one? Yes. So if we turn it, you guys can kind of see me. Yep, here we go. Right here. That space, yeah. right? Oh, yep. We have another camera where you guys can really <laughs> see quite well. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey! Again, Katie for the win. <laughs> Always. Alright. So this space right here is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that is in view and focus. There we go. Right there. So, and the keys that you get with your stretcher bars will fit into there. And, and these then, are keys. Yes, that's what they look like. The wood little, keys. Little wooden chunkies. Don't throw them away when you get it with your canvas <laughs> and you're like, what the heck are these? It's a bag full of keys. So uh, this one that we were working on right here mm -hmm. uh, already has the keys in there, right? right. I'm actually... Can you pull that out? I say, these look like they're very wedged these in. are very wedged in. <laughs> so ideally, I would do these one at a time. There's one key going this way, one key going this way, this way, yeah, and that way. <laughs> um, and you would knock them in individually like that. Yeah. So as you knock them in, you will notice the space between your corners get wider. Like this one is right here. Um, it's got a little bit of, like right here, the cross brace isn't quite mm -hmm. touching either because it's been keyed out too. Yeah. And you want that because yeah. when you do that, you're making your frame bigger, which will make your canvas tighter. So, so it's kind of pulling everything out. Yeah. So if you have a saggy canvas, that's what pulls it. Right, right. Ah, so keys sense. are good. Keys are important. Don't throw them away. Yes. All right. So... The next one that we can quickly go over is the Pro Bar. Uh, the Pro Bar is a heavy duty stretcher bar. So you can see compared to the medium duty, so these are both an inch and a half deep, but you can see that the medium duty is more narrow than the heavy duty bar. So this goes larger. These go up to 96 inches um, and they, this this is like your a perfect like go to large canvas. Always yeah. That's when I did custom canvas that was the most popular one. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'm actually so glad you put it next to the gallery pro because mm -hmm. they're the two that are one and a half inch for that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's hard to explain to someone the difference. Right. But that's a great yeah. visualization. Yeah. So what they what they're saying is this right here, the height of it from the table is one and a half inches up. Mm -hmm. This being the front of where your canvas would go on, where it has that little lip, that right there, that width, is the main difference between the two of them. Yes. Awesome. Uh, and then crossbars, you would put them on the same way as we did yeah. with these. So this is, they're built, I was going to say, almost yes. identically. Question about the crossbars real quick. Mm -hmm. um, a couple people have noticed that that crossbar is, and I can't tell if it actually is crooked or if it's just that you took it on the, the thing. Oh, it's is probably. that going to cause issues or mess things up later on? or This, I did not measure this out. This isn't squared. I was just running through okay. this. So don't, <laughs> when, you're, when you're actually putting, putting these together, uh, you'll want to make sure that your frame is square. And then you want to measure out. So if you have one crossbar, you want to measure where your, where your center point is. And if you measure your center point on each side, then it'll be perfectly perfect. Level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not like this. This is like a, a quick, just this is how you put it in. <laughs> All right. 
So um, then anything else about the pro bar that we need to specifically know? Because they have the same, um, right. what, what is the word for that again? Tongue and groove. Tongue and groove. Yeah. Tongue and groove way that they go together. It has the same little bump out with it the profile. It has a different profile. Uh, the Gallery Pro, I think, has a like a deeper lip. Yeah, where this one seems like it's a little bit wider, mm -hmm. and it kind of curves over just a little bit more subtly. Right. Whereas that one is more of an angle. Yeah. But both are good. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're pretty similar. Just heavy duty versus medium duty. Nice. All right. Now we're gonna not gonna put that together and whack things with a hammer in your ears. So we're gonna whack something else together. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and actually, before we do that, let me get these out of the way Ooh. because this is a little bit one of these though. Bigger, okay. Um, and then this, yeah, is, I love these. Maybe we do it this way so, so they can really see. I, this was uh, one of my, my college requests. Um, I paint really big or, well, I definitely painted big when I was in college. I've, I can attest you know. to that. I've had a couple of her paintings that I've had <laughs> to move around. They are huge. Yeah. Bigger than we are. Um, and so I liked a really thick bar. And the other nice thing is when you're painting really large, it's great if you don't have to frame it. So we created the profile bars, which are actually the same dimensions as the pro bar. And no, I thought they were. Never mind. I close. Lied. They were close. But in comparison, though, that would be really good to have here. Because you can see, like, this is the profile bar. So this is the part so that has your canvas on top. You can see that the pro bar is actually wider than the profile bar. Mm -hmm. But the edge, this is one and a half inch. This is, I think, two and a half inches. Yeah, it's a chunky, mm -hmm. chunky pro, uh, depth as far as your canvas is concerned. So when you do rack your canvas, this is the side um, that you guys are working with. Right. So the profiles, very cool. We can whack these together. All right, now, is there a trick, especially if you're whacking such a large canvas together, and that's the technical term now that we're officially coining. Yes. Whacking it together. Uh, is there a trick to such a large one to kind of, like, is it better to work on the ground or? This one's not too, bad so I, guess I can do this one on the table but the larger yeah. it gets uh yes you I'm thinking would about the ones that you would have ground. in your college the ones that were gigantic that I could barely do this to and hold them so you will put those together on the ground um ideally you want to make sure that you have something soft beneath it because otherwise like if you you're working on a concrete floor or something you don't want to be slamming the wood into the concrete you want to have something that has a little bit of give. Which is also a great point because of yeah. why we're using the rubber mallet mm -hmm. and not a hammer to right. get the wood together. We use the hammer to just put the tacks in, mm -hmm. but not the rubber mallet, because the rubber mallet keeps it from damaging the wood, right? Yep. Now, if you don't have a rubber mallet, one trick I know specifically is to wrap it with a cloth, right? Mm -hmm. And then use a hammer that way your hammer has something kind of in between the wood and a buffer. Yeah. A little bit of padding. All right. So I will hold this. Question before you start hammering. Yes. Why one over the other as far as medium to heavy goes? The, or the, is it the size medium used? Is it just big size? Like between the two pieces? Uh, between the medium duty, like the gallery and the pro bars. Mm -hmm. um, Mostly not for these size that we're holding right now, just the other ones that we were just right. showing. So for the, like if you're going with really large sizes, then a heavy duty is a lot better. Also, if you paint really heavy, so if you're doing a lot of impasto work, mm. um, building up your canvas, then you want a heavier duty bar. But if those aren't really issues, you can still use the pro bar and they're great, um, but you might want to use the medium duty because it's a little bit lighter. Yep, that would make sense. Yeah. Because the more weight that you have on your wall, then you'd also have to have heavy duty yeah. hooks and stuff like that. And I feel like I, you guys can't see me. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's whack this together, though. I will hold this side. All right. 
All right, and just so you guys do know, uh, it's really not that scary. Uh, I am wincing because I know this one. Um, and she, with a, we call her a tiny tornado because- uh, Who calls me that? Nobody. <laughs> um, we just, uh, you, you with a hammer in your hand makes me a little nervous. I like tools. But it's usually not that scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so before I, finish assembling this one, we are going to talk about the lovely cross bracing options that we have. Yes. So the nice thing about the profile is that you have space for two, which means you don't need notches on your crossbars. So I'm going to, now before you actually shove that in there, um, let's actually show, I don't know, uh, actually let's do maybe the side view so we can kind of get a better, just a viewpoint of this, there we go. So this one, uh, can I get a different cross brace? Do we actually here? It's down here on the floor. All right, so this is the cross brace we've been working with. So um, it just has kind of the bottom chunk of that taken out. So when you do put it on um, the wood, it kind of just sits like that. Now, the ones that have the, the little wedges in there to where this fits in perfectly, clearly this is not the right one. This, though, has it taken out of the top and the bottom. And that's why you're seeing these holes for right. the cross braces. That's the cross brace hole. Official. So because these need to slot into those holes before we assemble the frame, I'm going to put those in and then get does it matter which one, especially with the double, would it matter which one that you would put it in? Uh, well, for the smaller one, there was there's only one slot. And that's because you would only really need one. Right. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm talking about for the, sorry, for the 30 inch. Like that double, the double hole. Does it matter which one you put it in? No, because when you have the cross, uh, one's going to go on top, one's going to go on the bottom. So let's kind of turn that to where you guys can see. That's what she just did. Yeah. So she put it in the bottom one, and clearly you'd put it in the same side on the other yes. cross brace, because otherwise, well, honestly, I don't think it would fit together. No. Right? No, we're not. <laughs> All right. So, ooh, watch the camera. <laughs> Hello, expensive equipment. I'm understanding the tornado comment now. Yep. All right. So you would put the cross brace in at the same time as... Oops. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, what? you got the cross brace that popped out over here. Oops. <laughs> Did we move this camera? Do we need to? <laughs> All right, so this is just like really high stakes Legos, right? I love Legos. All right, so let me make sure. Sorry guys, we did kind of move the camera here a little bit. <laughs> Not bad. We're gonna try and fix that. Who gave me oh. large pieces of wood? There we go. <laughs> I think that's it. All right, so I'm gonna turn this. Turn it back. And this one. It's definitely a little wonky. Yeah. <laughs> you might need the rubber. So this is the joy of putting together a frame. It's a lot of back and forth um, until you get it just right. Yep. But the main takeaway for the profile bars is that you want to make sure that you put your crossbars in 
before your last bar goes on. So that makes that makes total sense because otherwise you are not going to be able to get this in there right. at all without having one side off. Right. Now, would you say that it would probably be easier to do it with the smaller side off or the larger side off? Or does it really not make a difference? Um, probably, I don't know. I would say, like, <laughs> if, if you're going bigger than this, it probably would make it easier if you're doing the longer side because if you wanted to stand it up like you were doing to tap it on the corners. Mm -hmm. For me specifically thinking, like, if this side is too tall, I wouldn't be able to reach. That, that's fair. So, and you get a little step stool until you're, you know. Listen, I live my life with step stools. <laughs> All right. So um, are there any questions on specifically these uh, stretcher bars that we've gone over so far? I do have one question. Yes. From YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked, why stretcher bars versus panel? Uh, well, one would be weight um, and your size. So if you're painting really large, um, being able to take it off the stretcher bars to ship it, um, that's a big deal. Also, um, just the weight of panels that are that are so large, it, it yeah, can say, get panels, very, very heavy. <laughs> how big do panels come anyway? Like, um, I mean, I know you can make your own and like you can mount canvas to I don't know. a We've flat got, like, surface. We but have some 48 by 72 I panels. Was say, I mean, they can be quite large, but usually at that point, there's no like rolling your, right. like if, if I were to have a piece go to a gallery in New York, I would take it off the stretcher bars, mm -hmm. disassemble my frame, ship it with the canvas rolled, mm -hmm. with my frame all, you know, disassembled and in smaller yeah. packaging so that I wouldn't be spending so much money on shipping. It's also safer for your painting that way because yes. you have it rolled and protected with glycine as opposed to exposed and stretched. Yeah, it can be torn. That's also a very good point when ordering these, not even just after painting is completed, but with like shipping costs the way that they are now and everything else mm -hmm. right. on, it's much easier to ship a box of four of those. Exactly. It is a, a gigantic canvas. canvas, yeah. And safer. It is. Yep. Because let's Same be thing. honest, I love... I love our UPS and our FedEx and our postal service people, but I don't know why they like to put their foot through boxes. But I can't tell you how many times I've had something arrive to my front door and it looks like they've drop kicked it about 16 times to get it up my steps. <laughs> and if it was canvas, I would be very frustrated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that would definitely be something that if I were working so large, mm -hmm. that it wouldn't be like a 16 by 20, like the little canvas that we were showing down right. here. Um, if it was like a 72 by 72, I would not want to pay for shipping nor hope that they don't hurt it. <laughs> so yeah, stretching your own is a very good thing. It's a good solution. Yes. All right, so. Before you move on from those. Yes. yes. PCM designs would like to know if these stretcher bars allow for multiple cross bars or slots for only one. Do they get more the, more, the bigger they go? Oh, that was the other question I was going to ask. Yes. Thank you for that. Uh... So the, the, like if it were to get to a like, 72, would it have more more of these double holes? Yes, uh, because there is a framing guide online, so it it should have on there like how many crossbars you can use per size, which I believe would be in the technical notes as well. Either the tech notes or um, where there's like where we do like the color charts and things like that. I don't know. Yeah, where there's like. PDF attachments and stuff. Um, Amanda, but it is on the page. And Katie, <laughs> you, would you guys know where those attachments would be specifically for those people watching that are looking for that information on our website? Like, I would, I would imagine it would be in the tech notes. So if you do click that little yellow circle button that has like a image of a page that looks like it's starting to turn down, mm -hmm. that's our tech notes button. And every line item, like every stretch of our size, should have that button. Yes. With those details, but if it's not there, it should be somewhere on that page. Katie is looking it up, and we'll find the answer. Um, but yeah, no, I do, I do kind of remember because it's been a while since I've seen these, um, all the different sizes of these cross braces or the on those specifically. Bars. If 
next to the, like if you scroll down to where the product is and you can see all the different sizes, the actual, has it in the name. So like the two oh, and a half extra perfect. deep, two and a half inch extra deep stretch of our strip, single 80 inch, next to it, it says four slots. So it tells you how many is awesome. right next there to you each of them. So where it says, four slots or however many many number of slots, that's what however many cross braces you can have. It says it in the notes and stuff too, but it says it specifically for each one. In the line item. Oh so you don't even have Beautiful. to click. That's lovely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that would make sense. And I would imagine it would also go with that 36, 30 inch kind of a, somewhere in that range, kind of that rule. Yeah. Yeah. So every so many feet that you would need a cross brace, I would imagine this would already have the little slot built in yeah. for you already. Frames. And this is, by the way, very sturdy. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it's really, really, really solid. So now we are going to get into a little bit more, some fun frames. I am so confused. And I would imagine a lot of other people are as well. These are amazing stretcher bars. It just makes my brain go, huh? So, okay. so these are the <laughs> these are the Museo um, Alu frame bars. They come in two different depths. There's uh, and that's A L U Alu, like aluminum. Do we have the depths on there? Um, I don't know if we have the no. depths. Wait, no, we do a 15 sixteenths. So that it's is almost this one. one inch. Yeah, 15 sixteenths. And then they have a heavy duty bar that's like one and three quarters inch, I think. Um, but both have the same aluminum frame. The nice part about these, so the structure of the bar is aluminum, and then it has a, uh, a spruce. Let's see. We can probably do this. It has a spruce cap that goes onto the bar. So the, there are some aluminum bars that are all aluminum, and the issue with those is that when your um, canvas can sweat and it would sweat onto, the aluminum makes it sweat. So it'll create condensation, which isn't great for the archivalness of which would make sense because it is an organic material, right? And it does have uh, moisture in there. So Sorry, I didn't know the canvas sweat. Yeah. So this way, <laughs> you have uh, the canvas is just touching the wood. It doesn't touch the aluminum at all. The aluminum is just the backbone Structure. and the frame that is not going to warp because mm -hmm. it's metal. Yep. <laughs> it won't. It won't wiggle on you with the uh, moisture in the air. But I'm going to show you guys how to assemble this. So for larger sizes, there are actually some L brackets that you can put in here. Um, there are some slots. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so you would put two L brackets in each corner. Now what slot would it fit into? Would it go in here or would it go in here? Here. These. Okay. Yeah. These. So it would go in the, the bigger the hole. Middle. Yeah. To kind of give it... And this is just to give it structure. To, to give it extra strength in the corners. So this would just be for really large sizes. This size, totally not necessary. Uh, I'm talking about like a 48 by 96. Yeah, add in the L brackets. So I've already had, I already did uh, these ends. When you are ordering these bars, you order the sizes you need, so we ordered um, they come in sets of two, so if you get 18 inch, you're going to get a set of two 18 inch bars. I believe it does say that on the line item yeah. as well, it says pack of two, so it's not that confusing. So what you need to put together just a basic frame is your stretcher bars and the um, assembly kit. Yes. Which is, I think, the first line item on that yes. page. So don't just order the stretcher bars, you need all the hardware yeah. to put it together physically. So that but kit includes four of these guys. I've got two of them in there. One of these, one of these, and two of these. So what are those? Well, Emmy, I'm glad you asked. We're getting there. So <laughs> these guys are going to create your corners. So we'll start by sliding this in. And actually, um, Let's pull this a little forward here so you guys can see. All right, so I'm sliding this, hopefully. 
into that first slot. So your L brackets would be here. That little smaller section right. um, is where yes. the brackets go. And we tighten them here, which is like the nicest Allen wrench that I've ever seen. It's got a nice like handle. <laughs> and then since this I think is I want that for my office, my last side, I'm just going to get these pieces in first. And I will hold it for support. I think I'm, wait, nope. I did this the oh, wrong way. Oh, yeah, I it just to put it in me. the bar first. Because you can't slide the bar yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. OK. This is how this you guys all are not. You guys are not alone. If you do this at home, just know, even us professionals, we, uh, we do it too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So this is my fourth and final bar that I'm adding to this frame. So, so instead of sliding it into that, we need to slide it there so then we can slide that onto those bars. So I'm putting my corner pieces in first. And then I'm going to slide those corner pieces in here. Now, again, my question is, would you have tightened all of these completely before you get to those? Um, yeah, that shouldn't make a difference, I don't think. Because these should be perfectly like 90 degrees, right? Yeah. This is not a frame where you really need to worry about having to tap it and go crazy about, um, did I? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't have to like go crazy about getting it nice and square, but you do probably want to make sure you don't pinch yourself because I can see that happening. I wonder if, it, if you tight or loosen this back up. That might be the problem. We do this all the time. Yeah, totally. No, we really don't. It's it. How long has it been since you've worked with one of these frames? Oh, a couple years. Yeah, they're great frames. All right. So, so we tighten. So you can see there's a little screw in there that she's tightening. It also probably doesn't help that you're a right-handed person and you're doing this from like a left angle. All right. Okay, you wanna put it down? Yes. Yeah, there we go. So one of the cool things about these bars, um, according to the company, you don't need crossbars for sizes until they get to like 48 by 96 or something stupid like that. So that 30 inch, 36 inch rule would not apply to this? Technically, no. Because of the aluminum? Yes. Ah. But I am also of, I'm also very skeptical. And so I, I like some structure. So maybe you just don't need as many crossbars. I don't like the idea of really alert, like a 40 by 60 with no crossbars. That doesn't make sense to me, but yeah. The company says probably don't need them. So, but if you like Heather, you can always add them. Yes. And well, that was what I was going to say is really cool about these. Um, so before we get to the crossbars, what are these guys? That was my other question. Uh, so this piece goes in on these sides. So it's a little eye hook. And this is actually for your hanging wire. No kidding. So you want to get it to the point that it's, oops, got it. So you would probably measure yes. wherever you'd want it to be. You want to measure because you have two of them that are okay. going to go. So on that accidents. little, before you put that in, um, this little part right here, this little almost diamond shaped little toggle type thing, when you put that into this little bracket, which actually maybe if we go to the side view, that would probably be easier for them to see. All right, so if you put that in here and you have to loosen it up to where it's quite um, almost at the end, 
put that in there and then you start turning this, that's kind of held in place, which hopefully you can see because my hands are in the way. Um, that little thingy right there is held in place because it can't turn. Mm -hmm. It is too wide yes. uh, with these little points. So that is as you spin it and this gets uh, more of the bolt on this side, that's what kind of locks it in place. So if you see it here, it is really in there. Right. And I was actually very surprised. I didn't. And it's nice because then uh, your hanging wire isn't on the back of the canvas. It's it's really yeah, flush it would be. With, with your bars. So you can get it nice and close to the wall. Uh, it, I think that's a nice little addition. Yeah. And remember, this is the part that has the little lip. So this is where your canvas would go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's like right in the middle of your canvas, yeah. which is really very cool. Uh, so then, what is this little thingy? What is this little thingy? <laughs> All right, so yeah, that was um, the weirdest thing that I've saw, seen, and it's very confusing. So we were talking about how important it is to be able to key out your canvas. Um, this is the Museo version of a key. All right, so you would put that up against the corner L bracket, right? right. And then tighten it, which is one of those things that I'm just going to let you do because it is hard for you to see and not cover it up. One moment, please. Okay, so I now have that secure there. All right, so this little bolt right here First I need is to... tightened into the frame, right? So that's right. not moving, right. right? So now I'm going to loosen up this bolt over here. All right, so that's tight. That bolt is tight. That bolt is loose. Right. Right. And then there's this random floating bolt, and I'm gonna start tightening that. And what that's doing is it's pushing down on the corner so that it separates and adds space and opens up and keys out the canvas. Let's push this a little further over that way, yeah. So this is pushing pressure towards me, and that's what's separating the canvas. Right. That is so cool. So when... But I would imagine you can't do that too much until you loosen up the other corner and also do that. Right. It's it's a whole a whole process. So you'd probably want to do this um, almost like you would uh, tightening lug nuts on a car. You wouldn't want to go one to the other. You'd want to go cr crisscross. Right. Which would make more sense. Right. So before you remove that though, you want to tighten that before one. Before you remove it, you want to tighten your uh, regular bracket, okay. so your original corner bracket, mm -hmm. and then you can remove this key. little key doohickey thing. The key doohickey. The, the technical name. And then you would flip it around and then do and Use it this all corner. the way around the canvas. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, now let's say you have been you can do this at the beginning, or let's say you've been, uh, you've had this painting for a while and then you realize, uh, it really needs cross braces. Well, you do not have to disassemble the entire thing to put cross braces on, which is really cool. So when you get your cross braces, you'll get the brace itself, and then you'll get uh, a cross brace connector, which is a two pack. These are the connectors. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you're going to do is... Which, that looks familiar. It's about the same thing as what's on your little eye bolts. So right. I would assume this would go into... The frame. That section. Yeah. Okay. So I'm so, going to give this up to you and let you assemble what's your down here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you're going to put the shorter edge into that slot. Mm-hmm. And then on the opposite side, you're not you're gonna do it on the um, on the other 
Here we go. Yeah. Sorry, you want to make sure you guys can see. So you don't want them both on the same side. It'll stay balanced by putting one in one corner, one in the other. Ah. So make it look crisscrossy. Yeah. And then you just place that. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, did I? Nope, we did that wrong. Did that wrong. Okay, hold on. That. There we go. Goes that way. Yep. Katie is shaking her head at us. I'm sorry. Okay. So sorry. Uh, before you do that, though, let's let's show it. it yeah. It's actually this way. <laughs> sorry. It's it's very easy to put these backwards, but yes, this is the way that you guys want to have your cross braces looking. To where this, when you have it here, is pointed at your frame. Okay. So once you have those ready to go. You place, again, measure about wherever you need your cross braces. If you're doing multiple, you need to divide it up. Like if you were doing two, you would maybe put one up. Like divide this space up into um, however many braces you have. So if you're putting one, you put it right in the middle. If you're doing two, you want to divide it maybe into thirds and have it right there. Um, and then measure it on both sides and then place your, your cross brace right there and make sure that it's nice and tight. tight. Now, I'm gonna quickly do this so you guys can see, but you would just tighten this up. Um, it's actually, if you do a uh, finger uh, tighten those, it doesn't take a whole lot to get these tight. I think I might be going the wrong direction. Righty tighty. Righty tighty lefty loosey guys. <laughs> there you go. And then this is really in there. So this is not wiggling. Now granted, keep in mind, I didn't actually measure it and it might not be perfectly straight, <laughs> but that's how you would uh, tighten those up. And it, it's a very, very sturdy canvas. And then I think the last thing I wanted to go over before we go is corners. Now I'm gonna actually put this over here because this uh, Museo frame is not one that you would use this for, no. correct? No. Okay. It is not. Quick question, speaking of corners. Yes. Somebody asked on Facebook, I apologize, I don't remember exactly who it was, but they were asking, why would you use cross braces as opposed to corner braces? Uh, well, for the uh, the frames like this, the like the stretcher bars where you're assembling it yourself, um, they don't have the corner options. This is just... Uh, they both work, but as far as those corner braces go, that's typically for the pre-stretched canvases. Um, but they they both work. It's personal neither. preference, yeah. I think, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, four corners. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your canvas is square, um, which we did not do on this. But yes. we're going to pretend yes. that it's square. Imagination. Another way to check, and it looks like I have one square corner. Um, so these hardboard corners come in eight inch and 12 inch, and they are perfect 90 degree angle. So, so this is the eight inch that we're showing you guys right here. Right, and what you'll do is you'll just tack it onto the back of your stretcher bars. Using copper tacks? Yep, you can okay. use the copper tacks, these work great. Um, but it's just an added uh, support to make sure that you stay square. Again, don't glue it. You always want to be able to remove it. Anything stretcher bar related, um, you want to be able to undo it at some point. So uh, that's, I mean, that's the basics of basics of stretcher, bar stretcher bars. Stretcher bars. Now, before we officially sign off, do you guys have? Any other questions that we have not touched base on yet? I think we are probably pretty good, which is awesome. Now, if you guys do have any questions, uh, whether or not we haven't quite gotten there, uh, we will always go through the questions and double check to make sure that we didn't miss anything. If you're watching this in the future, feel free to put your questions into either the, the you know, little comment box below, what, YouTube or Facebook, whatever. Hello, future. Yes, hi, future. <laughs> 
Uh, but if you guys do that, we will also make sure to get to those questions if you do have other things, because I do know stretcher bars can be confusing. So uh, that's why we wanted to make sure to go through them and show you the basics of what we offer. Um, and I think that was about it, right? Yeah. Did it. All, all of the things stretcher bar related. Now, if you guys are going to continue on the saga of all things canvas related, next week, this lovely lady is still going to be here. I am so excited. Canvas yes. Palooza month. Yes, Canvas Palooza. <laughs> canvas Palooza all January, just so you know. Uh, but we are going to be going over uh, canvas panels. Mm -hmm. So we've gone over the types of canvas. We just went over stretcher bars. And then next week, we're going to go over canvas panels. Now, not only canvas panels that come pre-made and ready for you guys to use, but also how to take the canvas that we showed you and mount them make to actually, yes, to make your own canvas panels. Um, so I am very excited. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of questions. I know <laughs> you do. Uh, so make sure to join us next week and we will see you then. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are you ready to dance out? Okay. All right. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. We'll see you next week. Bye.